we give this we gave a step down dose just around it. We didn't treat the whole prostate, just the prostate near the recurrence. And what did we find? PSA dropped from 10.8 down to uh, a few months later down to 0.79. Here it is uh, a year later or so, less than a year later, to 0.2. And then at one year later, the PSA was undetectable. Last time we checked was just about three months, four months ago, and the PSA is still undetectable. So, so this, this form of stereotactic treatment can be used for isolated recurrences in the prostate band. <clears throat> There's a, another really exciting application for uh, the use of stereotactic ablative radiotherapy, or SBRT. And this is, it's really a paradigm shift in how we manage prostate, or any cancers, how we manage cancers, period. The way, historically, oncologists think about cancer is when the cancer is, starts, whether it's in the breast or the prostate or in the colon or wherever, if it, if it hasn't spread, we try to attack the cancer locally. But once the cancer has spread, for the most part, we, we, don't, we don't usually go after metastases with local treatment, surgery, and radiation. Now and then there's some special cases that we've done it in the past, but for the most part, we rely on systemic therapy, like for prostate cancer, it would be hormone therapy, you know, Lupron, or maybe abiraterone, or enzalutamide, and sometimes chemotherapies. But, but most oncologists, especially medical oncologists who give chemo, are skeptical about the idea of going after metastasis. Well, part, why is that? Well, because for the most part, it didn't work historically. Why? Because surgery to go after metastasis is usually hard. It's usually a big operation. And surgery uh, is a big strain on a patient. So if you have, to, to do a bunch of different operations to go after metastases is, is hard. And radiation therapy historically stunk. We had a hard time giving enough radiation to a metastasis to kill all the cancer there because it wasn't very good. It wasn't accurate enough. So, but now that we have stereotactic radiation, this new form of radiation, extremely accurate, focused right on the, on the cancer, we now can actually ablate. We can actually ablate these metastases safely. So this, there's this new disease state that we are now uh, trying to tackle with local treatment. It's called oligo, oligo metastases. What does that mean? Uh, oligo means a few, kind of like in Russia, the oligarchs that run the country, the few rich people, rich friends of Putin, Putin, they, yeah, they're the oligarchs. Well, there's a few of them. Well, there's, when you have a few metastases, uh, up to five, most people say one to five, some people say one to three, that's the oligo metastatic state. And this, in this condition, uh, probably the disease burden the number of cancer cells elsewhere is probably limited. And nowadays we have better imaging, PET imaging, for example, ex-human scans, or, or standard PET for other, other cancers, that can detect these oligometastases a lot sooner than we ever could. Um, <coughs> so in general, this type of treatment, treating oligometastases is appropriate when the cancer at the mothership, you know, the prostate or the, the primary site, the breast, whatever, has been controlled. Um, in the case of prostate cancer, this treating oligometastases can be used up front before the patient's had any, any hormone therapy, or it can be sometimes done when a patient's been on hormone therapy and it quits working. Now, if you, if you, you guys want to look this up, there's in the medical literature, uh, it's either called SBRT, or as I mentioned before, nowadays you'll see more papers written as stereotactic <clears throat> ablative, SABER, uh, stereotactic ablative radiotherapy. I think they, they thought this was a better acronym <coughs> for marketing purposes, because it sounds cooler. <laughs> so, th this is the first big study that looked at uh, stereotactic ablative radiotherapy for 
uh, a few metastases, oligometastases. They had 119 patients, up to three metastases. Uh, this is for prostate cancer. And what did they find? When they treated with these metastases, on average, the remission was for 21 months. So they bought 21 months without having to start hormone therapy. That's a long time. You think that, because remember, if you do develop metastases, we treat, generally we treat them with hormone therapy, but that hormone therapy eventually quits working. So if you can delay, if you can defer the use of hormone therapy by going after the metastases with local treatment, <clears throat> you keep that in your back pocket. You keep that quiver in your, in your uh, arrow to be used down the road. Uh, so, that's, so that was the first big study looking at this from prostate cancer, treating oligometastases. <clears throat> this study came out now almost a year ago. This was the first randomized study for oligometastases where they flipped a coin. Half the guys, or actually a third of the guys had no treatment, and two-thirds of the guys had stereotactic ablative radiotherapy for one to five metastases. Now this wasn't only prostate cancer. This also included you know, other, other types of cancer. But what did they find? If they did stereotactic ablative therapy to these metastases, on average, patients lived 13 months longer. This is overall survival. Now, most, most of the patients are not prostate cancer. Prostate cancer patients live a lot longer. You know, this has, has colon and breast and lung and so forth. So the numbers, the survival isn't that long. But a 13-month improvement in overall survival is a home run. If you, if you could develop a drug, if you're Eli Lilly, you develop a drug that improves survival in cancer, metastatic cancer, any, uh, any form of metastatic cancer by 13 months, you, you're, you're, uh, this is a multi-billion dollar drug. So this, this, was, this is an, a, a, a really uh, incredible improvement. However, the study was small. It wasn't powered. Uh, it's, it has to do with statistics, but it was powered to find a signal, not to prove that it worked. So this is, <laughs> this is not definitive proof, but it is strong evidence that this treatment works. Uh, just uh, a few months ago, at our most recent meeting of, of my society, at, of our radiation society, they presented the first results of the same treatment, this ablative radiotherapy for oligometastases in prostate cancer. And this was called the, uh, uh, the Oriole study, and it was done out of, you guessed it, Baltimore. Uh, it was done out of Hopkins, John Hopkins. Uh, and they flipped a coin, and this, this was a randomized study as well. They had prostate cancer patients only. They flipped a coin, one group got standard therapy, the systemic therapy, the other group got this stereotactic ablative therapy. And they allowed up to three metastases. And they, they used conventional imaging. They used a standard X, uh, a CT scan and a bone scan. They also, on the side, as part of an experimental uh, aspect, did a PET scan, a, the best PET scan available for prostate cancer, PSMA PET. They did that scan, but they didn't use it for treatment. They treated whatever they could find on a standard CAT scan and a bone scan. So what did they find? Well, the, this is the, the, the patients that were free from cancer progression in the, the SABR, the, the, the radiation arm, and this is without it. So it drastically, it drastically delayed the progression of cancer. Also, very interestingly, remember, they did this PSMA PET on most of the patients and to look for smaller deposits of metastases that maybe didn't show up on the standard imaging. And so what did we find? Well, conventional imaging might, for example, find two metastases, but maybe there was a third spot that, that didn't show up except for on the, the PSMA PET scan. Well, if 
What happens if the radiation treated all of the pet, pet evident disease versus only treated a portion of it? Did it make a difference? Well, let's take a look. In the patients where all of the pet, the PSMA pet evident disease was ablating with stereotactic ablative radiotherapy, uh, these are the number of people that developed later metastases. Very few, uh, uh, this is the blue line, but look, uh, the red line are people where, you, where we did not ablate all of the metastases. What does this show you? The metastases are in turn metastasizing elsewhere. So this would indicate that the stereotactic treatment is killing much of the disease burden and preventing it from causing a new wave of metastases. So I thought I would finish this by showing some examples of cases I've, I've treated. I've been doing this stereotactic ablative treatment for about six years now, six or seven years now. And, well, I'm wrong. This guy, oh. hold on, when did I first treat this guy? Before. Um, yeah, I think it was uh, 2013, so I'm, I'm, I, I lost. I've been doing it for seven or eight years. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so here's a guy who, uh, uh, had a radical prostatectomy in 2003. Uh, it, the cancer uh, PSA went up, so he had pelvic radiation the next year, 2004. He had a, a, a lump in the pelvis removed surgically in 2007. And in 2013, he had recurrent cancer in multiple uh, lymph nodes. You can see those lymph nodes right there, those uh, the, the orange dots there. Maybe I hope you can see that. So. There were actually a whole chain of nodes uh, here. So we treated those lymph nodes with the CyberKnife. And here's the cancer uh, seven years ago. Here it is a year later, basically disappeared. Mm -hmm. and, his, and his PSA dropped from 3.2 to 0.56 four months later. Here's another case, 60-year-old man, uh, had a prostatectomy, his PSA started to rise. So they put him on Lupro. It worked for three years. Then his PSA started rising again. Uh, the CT scan showed cancer in his lymph nodes. So he got Provenge. Provenge is that immune therapy. Six months later, his PSA is up to 133. Oh, <laughs> man. And 133. And what does the CT scan show? This lymph node had, had enlarged market. Here it is. If we take that part of the scan and we blow it up, that is a lymph node. This, this is, here's the spine, here's the psoas muscle, the muscle that lifts your leg like this. That, but that big lump there is cancer. And, and notice, that is bowel. That's bowel there. There's a few millimeters. There's only a few millimeters between this Ooh. lymph node and bowel. So we treated it because we have submillimeter accuracy. So we, we treated that lymph node with the cyber knife. Here's the plan. Here are all these beams coming in, hitting that, that red node there. This is the spot we treated. And uh, here's, here's the spot we treated. And now, seven months later, it has shrunk markedly. And here it is about two years later. Never grew again. That spot never grew again. Uh, his PSA went from 133 <laughs> down to 18. Yeah. But, what, but now, but guess what? PSA started going up again uh, to 25, and we looked again, and what did we find? Another metastasis right here. Oh. Oh. So we treated that one. Five fractures with a cyber knife. Here, here's the lymph node. Here it is. <laughs> uh, I think that's a year later. Disappeared. PSA went from 25 down to 3.5. So we treated this guy multiple times. Here's that 133. Remember, it dropped down to here, then went back up. Here's the second treatment. We treated it again. That one didn't do anything. The PSA went flat, went up. He had surgery here. PSA dropped. We treated him here. It didn't work. This one worked. Dropped a bit. And this one worked again. So this guy between 2012 and 2017, he received no additional systemic therapy, no new hormone therapy, but we were able to keep this cancer at bay 
starting with, yes, they have 133 for five years just doing local treatment. Wow. So, so in conclusion, I think my time's about up. Did I, maybe I talked too long, but I apologize. The, so these new technologies we have, really computer-driven technologies, uh, have evolved and allow us to really accurately deliver high-dose radiotherapy uh, for prostate cancer. And for, for a newly diagnosed prostate cancer, uh, it can be effectively treated with, with Cyberlink uh, SBRT with, with good outcomes, uh, uh, with superior outcomes to external beam and with fewer side effects. Uh, Cyberknife is also effective at treating cancer that has recurred in the prostate following standard radiation or even sometimes following surgery. And, but it also can be used for treating oligometastases, these few metastases. And that, that treatment yields a prolonged cancer remission and it may develop the development of new metastases and improve survival in patients with metastatic cancer. Why? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. The most hard question for me is how long have you Well, you know, I'm really lucky because I like my job. So, so I think I'll be at it for a while. But well, my real question is this, and I don't want to make this case specific or take time from Rubio. So, I had polio, oh, I guess. I had uh, a prostate in 2015. Um, I had persistent PSA, like a point and one after surgery. So, I got on ADT and I had uh, full pelvic IMRT for seven weeks. I was good for about two years. Undetectable for the most part for two years. As soon as I got off the uh, ADT, the cancer, the numbers came kissing. Um, Proximal didn't come out by then, so I made a decision to just let it go until I got over that magic point five or right. um, which was last summer. The deoxygen found it in my uh, left lung chain. Yep. Uh, one was just below the bifurcation mm -hmm. down here, and a little couple of little specks down in the, in the groin. Yeah. I don't know the names of all the chains. I switched from Virginia Mason, now and I got into the ego system. I went, my, my plan was to do, sorry, right, to do um, SBRT, just to attack those problems. Um, ready to do it, and I go to the appointment, and radiologist comes in and says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't. What do you mean? Well, you've had all that radiation, I can't give you the more to go. And they were talking about doing IMRT again, and I was like, no. I want SBRT. No, she's like, no SBRT, the IRT, no proton, no nothing. So, Why is that? And, 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 well, all of these were in the field. Yeah, well, I do it all the time, treating the field. I do it all the time. The reason being is because you, you can't do conventional radiation twice. Right. But, Did you see that, that picture of that bowel that was three millimeters? Yeah. From a big honk of them. We were able to safely treat that, and we had killed the cancer that we ablated it all. Because it's, it's, the, you have to use a device that is extremely accurate. You can safely give SBRT in a previously radiated field, not always, but usually. But you have to have specialized device. How long ago was this at, at UW? Uh, well, How many years ago? Uh, no, it was just so I just had it cut out of me. Oh, well, uh, surgery is... Uh, Surgery is, ain't nothing wrong first, with that either. No, it was my first choice, but it's pretty definitive. It, it, yeah, it, it's, it's a lot tougher on you, but surgery works. Like I showed you that case today. <coughs> that, the, the one bouncing up, well, one of those you know, was treated with surgery. It turned off, it works. Yeah. But it's a lot harder on you than, than stereotactic radiation, I think. Uh, uh, so you have to have the right equipment. And the, I think that UW, they have great, great uh, <laughs> cancer center. But the radiation department hasn't been doing a stereotactic blade of radiotherapy for, I think they do it now and then, but they just don't have experience, I think. And, and arguably, I mean, I think people will disagree with me, but I think that the CyberKnife has better capabilities for treating very tightly because it has this real-time image guidance and it treats from, from lots of beams, the spherical geometry. So I see a lot of patients from, from UW. 
but it's only a limited number of oncologists because not all of them believe it. Well, what you're saying, I was like, oncologists, they call it black so, That's what it's called. And so, but you're <laughs> Absolutely. And we now have randomized data. We now have, we, we have randomized data now. Uh, the the, the uh, Oriole trial and the Comet trial that says that it works. Now, that, that's a separate issue is whether they can safely do it, but you need to have the, if, I, I've treated plenty of patients in field occurrences. We do it all the time. Do you use space or in your uh, procedure? Yes, but I think space or is a definite advantage for IMRT. Because with IMRT, you have to build a big margin. It's not as accurate. So if you can push that rectum out of the way, that's an advantage for, for IMRT. For CyberKnife, the advantage is less because we already stay off the rectum pretty effectively. That said, with patients, especially with a big prostate, uh, or patients that are really concerned about uh, preserving sexual potency uh, or uh, rectal functioning, if you do space or you can, you can, it makes it easier to stay off the nerves, the, the neurovascular bundles that lie next to the prostate. We contour them. And we tell the computer, stay away from those. But if you have a little bit of leeway where, where the rectum has been pushed away, it makes it a little easier. So yes, I use it, but not in everybody. But I do it in selected patients. Do you find that uh, insurance agrees with you? Oh yeah, we ought to use that. Or I'm sorry, it's too darn expensive. For, so when I first started this treatment, that's, I mentioned that study we started about 11 years ago. Hardly anybody paid for it. Well, that's why we did the study, so we've proved that it worked. Mm -hmm. And now that these studies have come out, that my study and other ones, now insurance companies almost always pay for SPRT for early stage prostate cancer. Uh -huh. For metastases, it's still a struggle because this is an emerging, this is an emerging indication. <coughs> so sometimes they pay for it, sometimes they don't. But we can almost always figure out a way to get you treated. I had the treatment done by you back in July, and my PSA was near 30, I told you for you. And one month after, it went to 10.7, and the last one I did with Lindsay mm -hmm. uh, was 3. 7 to 3? Yeah. But, right. but <laughs> this is the question. I, I had a physical two weeks ago. Yeah. And they made a mistake, but they didn't, I, they, they did a PSA, yeah. and it went to five. Oh, it's back up again, okay. So, should I worry? It's a completely different place, I got it done. Well, you, you, uh, you, I think you probably want more than one value, because they, they can vary from lab to lab. Which way might be a tourism. Okay, good. How, how long ago did we treat you? July. Okay, so. I was seven months. Yeah, so, so this is, I mentioned that on that one case, the one study, the, the average prolongation went on for more than a year, but but it varies from patient to patient. There's some, it's not that uncommon to have someone like you, where the PSA drops from 30 to 3, but then nine months later it's going back up again. Because we know if the cancer has metastasized to one node or to a couple of nodes, chances are there's other cells elsewhere in the body. And eventually they start growing. Now, that said, we kill 90% of all the cancer in your body, just based on the PSA, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's we're ahead of the game. If we kill 90% of your cancer, those that, that big chunk of cancer cells are dead, and they can't mutate and become more aggressive. So you're, we did we, it was a it was a win, but it's unfortunately not as as long as uh, as we would have liked. But I showed you that one guy. I mean, we, we had. We'd have wins that go on for sometimes six months, sometimes for a, a year, and then a new spot pops up, we treat them, and we kept them. Depends, like, after the things put in, you can do it again if they start going on? Uh, radiation? Or well, it depends. It's, it's, you know, it's too complicated. We need to know, we need to know more about your particular case. So, so it, it, it needs to be worked out. Worry about it. Well, I think we see a, a, pers a persistent elevation that keeps going up. Uh, then we work. But we should talk offline. Because oh, okay. it, it varies from patient to patient. Yeah, I'm still doing the loop. Well, I don't do loop, Ronnie. Switched it over to Oligarch. Okay. And uh, 
Marty Schultz. He's uh, oh, yeah. he's retiring at the end of March. Oh yeah. So he's instead of the three month, he's going to give me a six month. Uh, down, down in uh, Los Angeles. No, no. Okay. 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 Got it. How come I'm sent to you? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, looking at my my life, I've been on active surveillance for ten years, and I'm approaching eighty in a couple of months. Here, where's the the drop dead line out here? Where you're going to say just forget about it? Yeah. Well, uh, it's and how do you determine it? Like yeah, you know that's a great question. Do you, do you just give up at eighty and say forget about it? I, I'm not going to even check my PSA anymore if you're on active surveillance. I think it depends on the patient. So, as we talked about, prostate cancer takes a while to kill somebody. And it, 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 so if you have a low-grade prostate cancer, at least in three plus three, or even a little bit of four, and you're 80 years old, uh, and your PSA is not skyrocketing, uh, chances are you could probably get away with forgetting it, but not treating it. But it also depends on how healthy you are. You know, if you've, you, you might have a, 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 a gleason 8 cancer, but you've got a bunch of comorbidities. You know, you've got one foot in the grave because you've got coronary artery disease and diabetes <laughs> yeah. and kidney failure and all that. Well, forget about it. You wouldn't treat it. On the other hand, you might be 80 years old and extremely healthy and, and without a bunch of medical problems, and you you might want to be treated if, if your PSA is moving up or if the Gleason score got worse. I, an anecdote, this is a, a, an, a personal anecdote. My mother's oldest brother, uh, who's a Catholic priest, was, uh, was 80, 80 years old and was diagnosed with a, a, an aggressive prostate cancer. I think he, he, he had just turned 81, I think, by, when he was treated. And he... Uh, he had a, a Gleason 9 cancer, uh, reviewed at Hopkins. So they called him part, uh, Gleason 9. So he had uh, treated, he just died at age 98, free of cancer. Wow. I think try to find data on uh, what's better, proton beam or the cyberdyne. And uh, I think I want to ask that question what's better than this. Start describing the website, just describe what the two are. So, on your charts there, though, you had proton beam on the right hand side, and yeah, I didn't, on the left hand side. I didn't talk much about protons. There, there was some toxicity there. Okay. The toxicity comparison, yeah, there was a little bit on protons. So, to compare the two, protons use a cyclotron to make these protons that can be tuned. So, the beam hits the patient, deposits radiation, and you tune it so that once it gets past the prostate, it stops. You don't have an exit dose. So here's your prostate. One beam comes in like this, and then they have another beam that comes in like this, and they overlap. So you end up with double dosing. Half dosing here, half dosing here, full dose in the prostate. You don't have exit dose. That is a superior beam to standard Linux, CyberKnife external beam. So it's got a superior beam, but it doesn't have real-time image guidance. It is the same accuracy as is IMRT. It's accurate to five to, to, to eight millimeters. So, so one of them is, is more accurate. CyberKnife is, is vastly more accurate than protons, but it has exit dose. On the other hand, CyberKnife uses 100 beam. So any given beam doesn't have much radiation, but that, that overlap of 100 beams is a very intense dose. So the way I like to think of it is when we talk about complications or problems from radiation, what are they? Are they, are they giving radiation to the anterior of uh, the muscles in your abdomen or to your, to your butt 